Good morning, everyone. As you know, we are passing through the lockdown because of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So, we are going to start our video classes right from now. And today, we are going to discuss or study about geography lesson number one, about resources, its classification, its subclassification. We are going to discuss about resource conservation and sustainable development. First of all, what is resource? You know, right from morning till evening, we need a lot of things to satisfy our diverse needs. All these things that we use to satisfy our needs are known as resources. For example, you can see this one pencil. This pencil we use for writing. It is satisfying our needs of writing. So this pencil is also one resource. Now, if we move to the classification of resource, resources can broadly be classified into mainly three types. One is natural, human-made and human resource. Natural resources are those resources which can directly be obtained from the nature and can be used without much modification. Like air we take for breathing, water we drink, these all are the examples of natural resources. Next comes second type of resource that is human human made resource human made resources are all those resources which are made by the human beings by using their intellectual as well as technology like the pencil third one is human beings human beings that is we ourselves is also one type of resource because it is the human being because of whom the other resources they have got their utility or their value now we shall move to the sub classification of Natural resources. Natural resources can be classified on the basis of four grounds. Level of development and use, origin, stock of distribution, and usability or renewability. On the basis of level of development and use, resources can be classified into two types. Actual resource and potential resource. On the basis of level, level of development use, natural resources can be classified into two types. One is actual resource, another one is potential resource. Actual resources are those resources whose quantity is known. How, in how much quantity they are available on the earth, they are known as actual resources. For example, you can take the petroleum deposit in West Asia. The second type of resource on the basis of level of development and use is potential resource and the quantity of the potential resource is not known. No doubt we know how much quantity uh, how, uh, it is available, but what is the exact quantity on the of the resource that is not known? That is known as potential resource. For example, the uranium deposit in Ladakh. The second point is origin. On the basis of origin, resources can be classified into two types. One is abiotic and second one is biotic. Abiotic means all the non-living things like air, water, etc. And biotic resources includes all the things that we derive from the living beings like the plants and the animals. On the basis of renewability or reusability, resources can be classified into two types. Renewable and non-renewable. Renewable resources can be used once after use and non-renewable resources cannot be used after one use. For example, renewable resource we can take water, non-renewable resource we can take coal the last one is on the basis of stock of distribution sorry stock and distribution on the basis of stock and distribution resources can be classified into two types one is ubiquitous resource and second one is localized resource ubiquitous resources are the resources which are available in all the places like air wherever we go air is there so air is one example of ubiquitous resource and if we we'll go for localized resource these resources are the resources which are found only in some particular or certain places like petroleum. It is found on the earth surface but not in all the places. That is known as localized resource. So this is the classification of natural resources. Now the second type of resource as I already told you earlier, human made resource which are made by the human beings like the chair, table, books, pencil, pen, this all and human resource are also one type of resource because it is the human beings because of, because of whom all the other things have got their utility or the other things have become one resource. 
so that is about the different types of resource and their classification their definition and example so as we already got about the classification of resources now i am going to show you all the different types of resources and their classification from the following flowchart you can easily understand from this flowchart about the different types of resources and their class subclassification now the next point that we are going to discuss is about resource conservation till now we have studied about resources about their classification and i hope you have understood that the resources they are very important for every one of us as well as for our generations to come and as we got that some resources are renewable some resources are non renewable some are found everywhere some are found in certain places so it is our basic duty to save each and every resources present on the earth for our use and for the generations to come so the meaning of resource conservation is using the defined resources carefully and giving them time to get renewed that is a simple meaning of resource conservation for example if we will take a practical example every day every day in the morning we go for brushing some people are there during brushing they keep their tap of the water open that is wastage of water instead of that we can use a mug of water for brushing our teeth or we can close the tap while it is not in use that is a way of resource con conservation in the same way we can use a different other resources in a limited way so that it can be conserved for the present as well as future that's known as resource conservation and why resource conservation is important you can see in your geography book page number 5 one picture is there there you can see the girl is dreaming about one nightmare you can see she is having one nightmare there she is sleeping in the desert all the plants are dried up the animals are dead that is because of the overuse of the resources so if we will not conserve the resources at present time one day definitely will come when we or our coming generations they will face a lot of problems and for that reason it is very important to conserve the resources next point is sustainable development the meaning of sustainable sustainable development is balancing the need to use resource and to consume them conserve them for future use is known as sustainable development there are different principles of sustainable development the principles it is clearly given in the page number 6 of your geography book if i read out the points the first one is given respect and care for all forms of life you know about biodiversity on the earth different species of life are present right from the tiny microorganisms till the multicellular organisms like human beings elephants and these all and each and every organism they have and a very important place in the balancing of the ecosystem so we should take care of all the other forms of life and respect them the second point is given here is improve the quality of human life you know among all the living beings human beings are the most important creation of the almighty so we can use our intellectual the animals what differs the human being from the animals we can use our brain but the animals they cannot use they eat when they feel hungry but we can control our appetite and we can uh, modify our food also so we should try to improve our quality of life so that we can understand the value of the resources we can conserve it for the future third point is given here conserve the earth's vitality and diversity as i already told you on the earth surface different varieties of plants and animals are there we should understand about their importance and we should conserve them or we should preserve them next one is given here minimize the depletion of natural resources as we already studied and if you will go through the chapter you will come to know in a better way that the resources especially the natural resources which are available from our mother nature are very important like air water this all but no doubt we know that these things are naturally available we need not to pay anything for this for the use of these resources but if we not minimize the resources definitely the resources will be polluted and it will be it will not be fit for human use so we should minimize the use of these natural resources and one more point is here enable communities to care for their own environment we know that in our community all the people are not equally educated some people are there who are not 
educated they are not well aware of the different as uh, the principles of sustainable development or why to conserve the natural resources or how to conserve it so it is our moral responsibility as a student it is your res responsibility to make the people of the society or the community understand that we should conserve we should take care of our resources so that we can pass a healthy life and also we can present one healthy environment to our generations to come the chapter is completed first of all you need to read the chapter once or twice you go through the chapter if any doubt definitely you can contact me you can ask it to me and some homeworks i'm going to give you you just note it down i'm giving you the clip of the homework you note it down in your copy and definitely send it to me in time thank you